The 2024 race for Vermont Secretary of State is a rematch from the 2022 election. First, a conversation with the Republican challenger. H. Brooke Page has become one of Vermont's most prolific candidates, running unsuccessfully for multiple offices over more than a decade. The retired retail executive says as Secretary of State, he would advocate for an overhaul of Vermont's primary elections. Odd things happen. There's a lot of Democrats who like to grab Republican ballots trying to sway the Republican primary. The best example of that was in 2016. The Republicans did not have any candidates on the primary ballot for several offices, but let's talk about the worst offender. They had nobody for U.S. House. And so about 1,200 good Democrats snuck over, grabbed Republican ballots, and in an organized fashion wrote in Peter Welch. And so Peter Welch, in fact, was not only the Democratic primary winner, he was also the Republican primary winner. And whether it was out of ignorance or arrogance, the day after the election, he got out on television and said, I must be doing such a splendid job. Even the Republicans have made me their candidate. And you just could have heard the arterial <laughs> arteries bursting and about 100 Republicans were going, nobody did that. And they were right. Doesn't that speak more to the Republican Party's need to recruit quality candidates than it does to any sort of malfeasance at the ballot box because what you're describing is allowed in primaries my point is it shouldn't be allowed maybe we shouldn't even we spend about a quarter million dollars a little bit more to run our primary and for the most of all it's the dancing pony show almost all of the ballot positions have have one or no candidates on them take a look at all the money we spend to put the progressive ballot out and you know we have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of ballots being printed up, and they only have two candidates or three candidates, maybe a few more, statewide on the entire ballot. In my town of Washington, it's a blank sheet of paper, but we've printed it up, you know, and there it is. And, um, and, and so if we have primaries at all, they should be closed primaries. Or maybe we save the quarter million dollars and just have caucuses like some states have where the party gets together, has a statewide convention, and selects the candidates to be on the ballot for, in the general election. Page takes issue with Vermont's early voting and vote by mail offerings, which supporters insist allow more people to participate in our democracy. But the candidate argues the practice is actually in conflict with the Vermont state constitution. Which says that the election for governor, lieutenant governor, treasurer, secretary of state, and auditor of accounts shall be conducted on the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November. And it's specific. It says election day, a day, not a season, not when you get around to it. And so uh, we need to kind of get back on track. Jim Condos gave us what I call um, uh, elections gone wild, you know, where suddenly we're mailing ballots out all over the place. We are the only state that does so without having one or more of the following voter ID, signature verification cards, and up-to-date voter checklist. And without those, we have no idea whether the ballots that are coming back in were in fact voted by the folks that uh, they were addressed to. So we want to have happy and friendly elections. Well, that's not exactly what I think. I think we should be having safe and secure elections that everybody has confidence in. Because right now, and this is my biggest problem, is there sufficient fraud to, to change the outcome of the election? I'm unsure. But what I do know is there's a good 10 to 20 percent of qualified folks that could vote who no longer register vote and no longer vote because they have lost all confidence in the propriety of the election. This position does put you somewhat at odds with Governor Scott, also a Republican, because he supported the vote by mail initiatives. In fact, he has said he thinks they should be expanded to include primaries, for example, not just general elections mm -hmm. in November. The Vermont Public Interest Research Group, VPIRG, has said that Vermont is now just about the friendliest place in the country for voting, thanks to universal vote by mail. Whatever we do, 
in the legislature or in the state should comport with the state constitution. If they wanted to do all these mar marvelous things, they should have first gone and amended the Constitution. The Secretary of State also oversees the OPR, the Office of Professional Regulation, which licenses tens of thousands of professionals in a range of fields. The OPR says its work is absolutely critical to protecting the public from incompetence or shady practices. But Page views the office as too bloated. They have gotten into all sorts of things. They are not the best uh, agency or, or office to be doing. I mean, the fact that the Secretary of State's office is responsible for uh, pedicurists and, and, and uh, tattoo artists and beauticians. Thank you. This is better left with the Department of Health to oversee. Uh, interestingly, lawyers aren't regulated by the Secretary of State's office. Interesting, you know, uh, and, and, you know and doctors are not, but many other medical professionals are. So you would want to effectively shrink the office a bit? Yeah, I, I mean, the, the office, Secretary of State's office has become this, you know, uh, high, giant hydra, you know, that, that has kind of gotten its uh, tentacles into everything in the state. And I think we need to get it kind of back in its lane a little bit better. You want to increase the public's access to the archives, the state archives. Yes. Why is that an issue that is top of mind for you and what would that look like? Well, it's top of mind for me because back when I was involved in the school merger issues and in court for that, doing all of my research was done up to Middlesex. But most of the records I needed had previously been stored in the basement of the Redstone Building. All of those records are infested or infected with black mold. There's a lot of really neat stuff in archives. Now, much of it is either, you know, poorly arranged or, you know, has other problems with it. I would really like to see much of the documents, or the documents in the collection there at archives um, digitalized so that instead of having to go to archives and sign in and wait while some, some poor soul goes back in the a giant warehouse to find the box you want to look through and then hopefully the documents are still there that you would be able to access that all electronically and I think that would be a big improvement. The incumbent Secretary of State is running for re-election. Sarah Copeland Hansis disagrees with her challenger on Vermont's open primaries which allow voters to pick whichever party ballot they want. Copeland Hansis says the primaries were designed that way by the legislature, and she insists that is not a flaw of the system. If people want to see that practice end or be replaced with caucuses, Copeland Hansis recommends they contact their lawmakers in the state house. And the Democrat says she has complete confidence our elections are safe and secure. It is uh, always a conversation about how you balance access to the ballot versus 100% uh, security. And um, in Vermont, we have a, a somewhat unique system in that in addition to having the Secretary of State's office overseeing elections and ensuring that the processes are followed and our elections are secure, we also have 247 duly sworn town and city clerks whose job it is to maintain the elections on that local level. And I think that's really key to knowing that we have good election systems and that our elections are secure. In recent years, have you or the clerks detected significant examples of voter fraud or mischief? So. Anytime there's an irregularity that appears odd that a clerk is unsure of, he or she can report that to our office. And, you know, I think a, a good example of this is, you know, 2020 um, pandemic voting, universal vote by mail. We had seven reported incidents of irregularities. You know, it looks like John Smith voted twice. Uh, but after investigating those seven, uh, we found that six of the seven of them were, were simple human error. The person who was recording the incoming ballots recorded John T. Smith instead of John R. Smith. And, uh, and in fact, both John Smiths were eligible to vote um, and, uh, and nobody voted twice. The seventh of those instances was a person who unfortunately was trying to test the system and was caught.
and uh, and and the system worked, uh, the the process worked, and uh, you know I think by and large people know that there are significant penalties to um, to voter fraud, and um, and I just feel pretty comfortable that Vermonters uh, know that they get one ballot, they can use that one ballot, um, and that they're not supposed to be voting twice. What is your vision uh, for this office if you are reelected in November? How will you continue to work in this role? So during my first two years, we've really leaned in on civics, civic engagement, uh, education, and um, I expect that we will double down on that in the coming two years. We are just coming to the end of, the, of a process of doing Vermont's first ever civic health index, which is really uh, an opportunity to say, how are we doing? Where are people uh, more civically engaged? Where are they less civically engaged? So I think it'll be a roadmap for us for the next two years to say uh, geographically, demographically where do we find people who have a harder time engaging in their local or state or federal government um, so so continuing with the civics work is very important uh, when I came into office we had four major IT systems that were on their uh, on the on, at the end of their usable life uh, so we have been in the process of building new systems for our business services elections campaign finance and lobbying and in addition to that, we are modernizing our temporary efficiency um, online system, as well as our safe at home system. And so it's gonna be really important to me over the coming years to lean into the safe at home program because this is an address confidentiality service that is meant to protect people from harassment or stalking um, by allowing them to use our address to have their mail sent and then only we know where they live and forward their mail to them. Um, so we're building a new portal for the Safe at Home system that will allow us to more quickly and easily communicate with participants in the program. And I'm really looking forward to doing uh, a bunch more outreach so that more Vermonters understand what, the, what this program does and who it might benefit. You are, of course, a Democrat. You run as a Democrat, yet you are Secretary of State to all Vermonters. How in this nonpartisan role do you set aside your own political label? Yeah, no, it's a it's a really good question because uh, as the chief elections officer, I'm I'm the umpire of the game, right? I don't wear a, a jersey of that team or that team or the third team, um, and uh, and it's really up to me to make sure that the ground rules are fair, uh, that they are executed uh, correctly and consistently, and that we're offering really good service to everyone regardless of their political persuasion. So we've made a very concerted effort to make sure that we are reaching out to all of the political organizations, all of the parties. In fact, when we, uh, when we introduced this idea of increased campaign finance transparency, uh, because we'll be publishing a list after each of the filing deadlines of people who have not filed. We, uh, we went out of our way to make sure that we met with all three party leaders. You know, the Secretary of State's office is a group of 80-something uh, public servants whose passion in the world is to help people, to answer questions, um, and to have someone, uh, you know, hang up the phone saying, thank you so much for helping me navigate state government. Uh, we really are a group of uh, very service-oriented people, and I love leading this group of people because it's so easy to answer the question of what could we be doing better when customer service is really at the core of what we already do well. Check out my profile on your My Voter page. Um, it's important to me uh, that voters know who the candidates are who are on their ballot. And, uh, you know, I'm one of many names on your ballot, and I hope you'll take a look and feel free to reach out. Responding to some of her challengers' other platforms, Copeland Hansa says the state archives are quite accessible with helpful staff and more and more material being digitized every year. As for the idea of moving licensing of professions like tattoo artists under the health department, the incumbent believes that would be a confusing change for applicants and not safer, more streamlined, or user-friendly. She says her licensing division does a great job of outreach to licensees and calls their work vital to protecting Vermonters.